Hello and welcome to the Watch Kaki channel where we bring you all the good and honest watch reviews. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't done so, please, I'd like to remind you, please click the subscribe button, support my channel, come back here every week because I've got new videos uploaded every week just for you. And today's video is going to be a little bit special because we're not going to do a full watch review. In fact, we're going to do a tutorial on how to change out uh, the plastic shroud here on the Solar Tuner. So this series here, the Solar Tuner is the SNE series. I've got the 498 here and this is the 518 which I purchased recently. I love the entire series of Solar Tuners. I find them to be very light. They're just so nice to wear, very comfortable. All right. So I'm a big fan of the Seiko Tuner design. I have uh, what many people would see as the tuner, all right, the definitive Seiko tuner. So this one here has got the 7C movement, 7C46 quartz movement, high torque. And I think this one here, even myself, I regard this one as the original quartz tuner. But if you ask me, I actually prefer wearing the Solar C series more because I think them being lighter, thinner and all that, I really feel that this series of solar tuner, I think they are, for me, they are the best Seiko tuners out there. And before we begin the tutorial on how to change out the shroud here from plastic shroud, this is the stock part and we're gonna change it to the aftermarket part. This is the steel, stainless steel shroud here. So the end product is to make it look something like the original tuner. All right, so I think it's gonna work out really well. And now I'm gonna run through the parts that you need to do this modification. All right, it's a very minor mod. I, I don't even call it a mod, just a swapping out of the shroud here. So many Seiko fans, they're really quick to bash the shroud here, being plastic and cheapy and all that. But, but for me, I think uh, it really serves a purpose because it makes the watch so light, under 100 grams for a large size diver. For the 498 with the gold bezel and the gold crown here, I think I'll just leave it as it is. There's really no point in changing this one here because the black and gold look, uh, I think this combination is really beautiful. So I'm going to change out the shroud for my 518 because I feel that this one here being stainless steel bezel and all that, is going to look very beautiful even with this mod here. All right, so this part here, the bezel is bought from a shop called Time Lee, and you can find them on AliExpress. This shroud here is not very expensive. I, I believe I bought this one for under, just under Singapore dollars, $30, and I think it represents very good value. All right, it is decent quality. All right, you see that most of it is brush finishing. And we've got a few polished surfaces over here really nothing to complain about in terms of build quality for this kind of money so let's get on with the tutorial i'm going to show you how to change out the shroud here so i've zoomed in the lens quite a bit all right so we're running about 1.5 times zoom here and you can see george is somewhere around here you can see the shadow of his foot <laughs> okay so we've got the steel bezel here and all we need is a proper hex key or allen key so this is a two millimeter size two mm and i strongly suggest you get a really good one because if you get the one that is included in the sale i don't think it's going to work very well so all we need to do is remove the three bolts here one two and three so two on the nine o'clock side and one on the three o'clock side and that's all all right, so before we do that, we are going to check if the hex key fits well. All right, you get a really good fit here so you will avoid damages. All right, so I have made sure that the hex key fits well, so I'm going to just start turning and loosening the bolt. All right, one bolt out of the way. So now with all the bolts removed, let's 
place them safely on a tray or something like that in case we lose these bolts. All we need to do now is to unscrew the crown, pull it out so that we can remove this shroud here. See, it's that easy. Okay, and the watch now looks hideous without the bezel, without the shroud. Okay, so you can see beneath the plastic shroud, it is still an all stainless steel construction diver. And now we need to fit in this aftermarket bezel here. All right. Thank goodness the fitting is good here. The measurements, the fit here is really good. The cutouts and the holes and all that. So you can see it fits really well. And before we continue, I'm going to show you the bolts or screws that come with the timely stainless steel shroud okay so these ones here they look like rivets or just screws okay nothing fantastic so in this case i'm going to reuse the seiko bolts all right they look much better the color is nicer uh, even the design here this one here looks like a bolt whereas this one here just looks like a generic screw so i'm not going to use the part that time lee has given i'm going to reuse the seiko bolts here and before we continue i strongly suggest you press in the crown this is to avoid any accidental damage or you know, bending the crown or something like that let's just push in the crown here don't have to screw it back in yet and then we try to the bolts okay and you can also do a quick check by turning over the watch just to check that the screw is tightened properly right you don't want a screw that is loose a bolt that is loose and then when you're wearing the watch the parts come loose and all that so we're down to the last bolt here a final turn here to tighten things up a little bit and I think we are ready and we can screw in the crown and the next thing we're gonna do is to reset the time okay and ta-da! Alright, looks as though we got a brand new watch. Okay, so from something that looks like this, plastic shroud, all black look, and the watch here suddenly looks so different with the new stainless steel shroud. I would say it looks much closer to my SBBN31, which I recently bought for my buddy. This is the same watch that I reviewed last year, I think. Alright, so I bought it for my friend and I just love these tunas on rubber straps. I think, you know, the tunas, they are made to be worn on rubber straps. So, of course, this one here is not a premium uh, type of model. Alright, it's still very entry level bezel action and all that. They are still, you know, slightly on the cheaper side of things. But with the new stainless steel shot, I think it looks really different. I would say it sort of looks upgraded and... I really feel that uh, this is going to stay on the steel shroud. So in terms of weight, it definitely feels heavier now with the steel shroud, but still not as heavy as the SBBN31. And here's a quick wrist shot for those of you out there who want to see how it looks on my wrist. Uh, like I said, the solar series, the solar tuners, they really fit well. Even if you have smaller wrists, not a problem at all. Very short L to L and this watch here is rather thin at around 12 millimeters so not an issue at all and doesn't feel overly heavy or top heavy even with the new metal shroud here i'm just loving this one so there you have it that was my video on how to change out the plastic shroud to the metal shroud here on these solar tuna series watches and i really feel that I'm preferring this one more so than my original OG tuner, alright. I need to ask George 
uh, which one he actually prefers. Hey, Josh. <laughs> Alright, until next week. This is the Watch Kaki from Singapore. See you soon. Bye-bye.